All right. Um, in this video, we're going to be introducing ourselves to Load Runner. Um, you know, what are the uh, important components of Load Runner? Um, how we'll be working with each one of those uh, components, and uh, um, what is the significance of uh, you know using each one of them? Uh, what's the total uh, uh, complete life cycle of uh, using those components of uh, Load Runner? So. Why don't we get started and talk about it? Okay, now there are different versions of Load Runner. Uh, Load Runner 11 is the current version of it. Uh, these videos are created um, on Load Number uh, Load Runner version nine. Um, so, um, in the following videos, I will be installing Load uh, Runner 11 and then showing you things on Load Runner 11. So that way, we will come to know the differences between uh, Load Runner 9.5 and uh, Load Runner 11. All right. So for now, uh, the, the stuff which we are doing, it is not going to be significantly, uh, you know, uh, different. Um, and uh, I will highlight those differences as we move along, uh, because I will, in fact, uh, show it to you, those differences. So um, bear with me at this time and then, uh, you know, uh, learn what we are doing as far as 9.5 uh, is concerned. And uh, uh, you will very soon find when we start installing 11, you'll, you'll see the differences between so I promise you that you would be seeing the differences. So for now, let us go ahead and then uh, look into Load Runner uh, 9.5. So I have installed Load uh, 9.5 on, on, on my uh, system. So once you install it, you would find it over here. And uh, when you see Load Runner, you could go over here and then look into what are the uh, main components of uh, Load Runner. Uh, basically, you have uh, three main components of Load Runner. There's something called uh, uh, virtual uh, user generator, right? Um, uh, rather, VU Gen, as it is uh, uh, referred to. And then you have a controller, and then finally you have the analysis. Now we're going to be looking into each one of them. Um, but before we uh, actually go and start looking into each one of them, let us uh, briefly talk about uh, uh, what each one of them uh, is capable of and why we need. It. Now, VU Gen, um, I mean, virtual user generator, basically, uh, it's referred to as uh, VU Gen, V as the alphabet V, alphabet U, so VU Gen, G E N. So, VU Gen, um, what it does is it helps you create the script. Um, so, what kind of a script? Um, uh, basically, it, it records the actions um, I, as a user, I'm going to perform on. Uh, on any application. So the actions which I perform, they get recorded as a part of a script. And uh, that script is actually behind the scenes, uh, written in a language called C language. Uh, even though Load Runner offers you the choice of like using uh, Visual Basic uh, um, C, uh, but C is, is kind of like the default one. Okay, so what it does is uh, it emulates, uh, you know, the real user. Uh, and whatever action you perform, it emulates your action and uh, basically creates it, it generates a script. Uh, uh, that script is is considered like an action, like an action. All right. Now you'll know in a second what I'm talking about. Um, those scripts which are get gen which are getting generated um, are uh, protocol specific, meaning that uh, um, we can be uh, load testing. We can be uh, doing a performance test on. Uh, different types of applications. It can be a web application. It can be a Windows 32 uh, bit application. So um, if it is a web application, uh, of course, um, for web application, you'll be using different kinds of protocols like uh, HTTP protocol, uh, web protocol, or, um, you know, depending on, you know, what uh, it is doing behind the scenes, uh, we could be using uh, different protocols. And I'm, I will be talking to you about all that. Uh, you know, how to make sure what kind of a protocol your application will be using, uh, even though uh, that should have been given to you in the form of the specs. Uh, but there is a way to, uh, you know, find out uh, using a, a feature in Load Runner called uh, uh, Protocol Analyzer. So I'll be showing you that. But uh, um, basically, uh, this uh, view gen uh, allows you or, or um, um, rather, uh, you know, mimics uh, your actions and then behind the scenes goes and creates that script uh, and that script is protocol specific. I, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but that's what it is. Um, so what it is doing is uh, it's mimicking uh, a, a real user, right? Or emulating a, a user's behavior. Um, why do we do this? The reason we do this is because, um, you know, we want to go ahead and then test 
uh, and the testing is uh, is not uh, about the behavior or the functionality of the application. It's more about uh, you know how the application is going to behave when we start putting load onto the application. So how is the load going to be applied? Um, you know, uh, if if uh, uh, you are on a boat, if you are on a boat, right? Um, so uh, as as people start walking into the boat, uh, uh, there's a capacity of the boat, like uh, you know, it can take 55 people or 100 people. So if you start putting, uh, you know, uh, people more and more and more and more people, what's going to happen to that boat? I mean, it's basically going to capsize, right? It'll, uh, you know, uh, can take the load and eventually it'll go down. Uh, same uh, difference when it comes to like a uh, web application. Uh, so what is the load on a web application? A user who is coming to a web, uh, website. So if one user comes to the website, there's absolutely no load. But we want to find out like how many users uh, will uh, that website is capable of taking. At some point, it is going to cave in. It's going to give up and then not uh, will not be up and running. Rather, it is going to be crashed, right? So that is basically what we want to simulate. So that can be done uh, if we create a script and this script is for single user. So we can um, emulate, um, you know, uh, hundreds of those users uh, by by taking the script of the actions performed by one user and then going into the controller. And in the controller, we will uh, configure the controller and we'll say that uh, even though the script is for a single user, but uh, uh, we want uh, you controller to go ahead and then run it, uh, simulate as if there are like um, n number of users. So it could be 50 users. Uh, to 5,000 users, right? Any number of users we want to use uh, as a controller. So we'll be applying uh, that load through the controller. Uh, and then once you apply that load, uh, I mean, the, the lot of settings in the controller which you have to go and then set. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the end goal is uh, to place the load on the system. Um, so the controller helps in generating the load. Um, uh, how do you generate the load? Uh, uh, the, there are so many, you know, configurations which you would be uh, doing. Uh, uh, one of the configure or, or one of the settings is uh, how many uh, users do you want, number of users, and then uh, what is the pattern of the entry of these users? Do you want all like uh, uh, 50 people uh, coming into the boat at the same time, or 200 people coming onto the boat at the same time? There cannot be like a, at same moment all 200 people would be on, on that boat. They will start coming in. They're walking in one by one by one. And at some point, there will be 200, 250, and the boat cannot take it, and then it will sink. So likewise, uh, do you want to have all uh, 5,000 or 10,000 or whatever be the number of users to be going into the controller, uh, you know, going onto the website the, at the same time? No. So you want to ramp them up, right? So you would say that, okay. I want um, 3,000 users or, or 100 users or whatever be the number of users. But let's start off with like 10 users first. And then every uh, two seconds or every five seconds, I want to ramp it up uh, so that it becomes like, uh, you know, at, at the end of like, um, you know, the ramp up period, we have to have the uh, N number of desired users. Uh, and then uh, we will measure uh, how uh, the application is going to behave. Uh, will it withstand uh, that load? Uh, so we got to be doing some sort of monitoring. So what kind of monitoring will be doing? We'll be doing uh, monitoring like uh, uh, monitoring of the system resources. We could be doing like how uh, you know uh, the CPU uh, is, is is standing up to this load. Uh, is it is it working the way it is it is uh, working with uh, less number of users, or, or it is going to uh, you know go crazy, or it is going to bog down? So we will see the uh, we will be monitoring uh, the system resources like the CPU usage, uh, the memory, how much of memory is being consumed, uh, you know, when it comes to like when you start applying more and more load, how much of memory is being consumed, how are the app servers standing up to the load, and then we'll be looking into if there is a database server, so, um, when we start, you know, hundreds of users are coming and then searching for some item in their database, how is the database reacting to it? So we'll be looking into all of these layers, right, uh, uh, of the architecture of that uh, application. Um, so we do all this uh, through something called scenarios. So when we go into controller, we will be configuring, we'll be coming up with scenarios. And the scenarios is uh, not only just uh, coming up with the number of users, but what do you need to monitor 
um, you know, so we'll be uh, monitoring the system resources uh, uh, by configuring that scenario, right? So, um, like likewise, we'll be doing a um, lot of other things as a part of the controller, right? Uh, what is the goal here? The, the goal here is uh, uh, when we start to apply uh, this this load, um, eventually uh, the system uh, can't take it anymore, right? Meaning that it'll bog down. So those are the bottlenecks. Where is it, uh, you know, uh, going down? Uh, will uh, uh, putting more memory help it? Will will adding, um, you know, a faster CPU is going to help it? So we have to do the analysis. That's where this analysis component comes into the play. So analysis, uh, basically what it is going to do is uh, uh, based on, you know, what uh, we, we, have we have been monitoring, uh, so at the end of uh, the monitoring process, uh, we will capture some data. So that data uh, uh, we will analyze uh, by producing some sort of, uh, by generating some sort of graphs and reports. Uh, and those graphs and those reports uh, uh, will conclude uh, where the potential uh, bottlenecks are. Uh, like, uh, you know, the response time is different for um for uh from what it is expected right how how much different it is uh, if the expected uh, in the business uh, team has mentioned it to you that uh, the expected uh, response time should be like 5 seconds and uh, uh, and if the under certain load if the response time is is near to that value or uh you know far away from it is it taking twice of that if it is taking twice of that uh what could be the cause of that. Is it because of uh, the high consumption of the memory, or is it because of the high consumption uh, um, of uh, the network bandwidth, or, or because of uh, the CPU uh, utilization? So what is causing that? So that's basically what uh, is going to happen with the use of all of these three. So to start with, uh, you you cannot be simulating thousands of uh, users unless you have uh, the actions which are performed by a single user. So you have to have a script. So the script is generated here. That script is fed into this uh, controller, and the controller is basically going to, uh, uh, based on how you set it up, uh, it is going to execute that script for you, and then monitor, and then um, fetch some data, and that data will be analyzed, and then um, you will uh, that data is going to produce some intelligent graphic uh, uh, graphic. Uh, some graphs and uh, some reports, which we will eventually help us in uh, coming up with the conclusion of uh, where uh, and how we are going to uh, help uh, get the optimum performance uh, out of this application by adding, you know, whatever we need to add. All right. Okay. So that's basically uh, all um, about performance testing using these three components. Well, in the next video, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll, I'll be, uh, we have talked about it in this video, right? So in the next video, I will actually be going and then showing you uh, piece by piece. We'll start off with uh, VU Gen. Uh, we will go ahead and then uh, see what does it take to create that script, right? So uh, we talked about that script, right? So we will um, try to work on that script and we'll see how to, how to create that script. And uh, once the script has been created, uh, we will try to learn everything about that script. And then once we are comfortable with uh, the generation of the script as how we can generate a script, uh, looking into different things which are involved uh, because uh, you have uh, many, many, many things which are involved in creating that script. So because uh, you have actions, you have protocol analyzers, and then you have uh, uh, your scripts which are getting generated in, uh, um, uh, in C language. Uh, there's something called uh, uh, correlation. There's something called parameterization. And then there, you know, a lot of things that you need to look into. And eventually when the um, uh, script is ready, then we will get into controller and then we'll uh, spend a major amount of time in the controller trying to configure different settings so that we could uh, produce uh, some good good data which uh, will help us in the analysis of how to optimize this system. All right. So uh, I'll see you back in another video sometime soon. And until then, um, you know, uh, if you uh, have already installed Load Runner, be ready with it. If you have not installed Load Runner, um, try and, um, you know, uh, watch that video, uh, which will show you everything about how to install um, Load Runner onto your system. All right. Okay. Uh, see you soon.